Good morning, everyone. Um, I just thought I would make these videos as I worked on stuff. That way you could see a variety of different applications um, for different tools and dyes and things uh, as I work on them. Um, eventually I'll go through and I'll do an entire front to back, start to finish type series. Um, but for now, I am actually working on making a cuirass that will fit across my upper torso. Um, so right now I'm just working on the basic panels. So this is actually the front panel that I finished. Um, I did some little tooled borders that are real simple stamping. Uh, and then I would use my beveling tool here. Sorry about the bell noises. Um, and then I also, you know, dyed it, finished it with super sheen, beveled the edges, um, dyed the back of it. Um, so now I'm working on the back portion of this same kind of um, piece of armor. Uh, and this is the raw, unfinished leather. Uh, the edges are still rough. It has no color. Um, it's kind of flimsier. Uh, all that sort of stuff. It hasn't been tooled. There's no, you know, fancy borders or anything going on. So today I was going to go over the steps of how I get from this to this. Um, and that will include um, prepping the leather for tooling, doing the actual simple border with some stamps and a swivel knife, and then dyeing and finishing it and cleaning up the edges. So thanks for watching. So, for starters, oh my gosh, I have to sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, for starters, there's a sticker on the back of this. Um, so really, I've found that you can take any old knife, like this is my hunting knife, that needs to be cleaned. And you can generally, kind of, gently, very gently, kind of score sticker off the back. Kind of does some funny stuff like that, but that's okay. Um, no one's going to see the inside of our armor. So, we'll just have an extra fluffy spot. So, the first thing that I do before I do anything else to the leather is I take care of the tooling. So, on the front portion of the leather, I did this nice little leather border. It has sort of a little flower and then some little punches just to give it some interest. Nothing too fancy um, and it's not too terribly time consuming. Um, I use four stamps to do this pattern. I use kind of this big flower, big flower. Um, I use a cedar, I believe it's called. My memory is terrible today. Um, I use this neat little leaf stamp that I found, um, and then I use this one which is sort of just like a line of little beads. Um, so these are the three that I use. And later we'll also use a beveler, which um, I have laying somewhere around here. Calm, calm with the bell. Yeah, we also use this beveler for doing, uh, like, smoothing out and adding some dimension to the edges of our border. But that'll come later. Uh, so we have these three tools. What? I apologize. Um, anyway, this is my quartz slab. You don't have to have this. Um, I used to hammer directly onto my wooden table all the time. A big quartz, big, a big quartz slab like this, a 12 by 12, is about $50 at Tandy Leather. You can get a tiny little 6 by 6 um, for about $20. Um, like I said, not 100% necessary, but incredibly useful. Um, whenever I take my poly hammer and I bang on this table, it like echoes through the entire house and it's really loud and it shakes everything on my table. Stuff falls off of it all the time. When I do tooling on this, it's much heavier. There's much less reverberation. It makes my tooling patterns a little bit cleaner and more even because I'm not working with weird bumpy wood. Um, 
So like I said, bare minimum, you don't have to have this. Um, do I absolutely say it's worth the money? Yes. Um, so the first step with tooling, so for tooling something, just in general, overview of tools, you'll want the stamps that you're going to be using, of course. Um, you'll want a hammer. I like the poly mallet. It's another $10 at Tandy Leather. And then I also have this mister, which happens to be a bird mister, because <laughs> that's my life. Um, but this does like a micro spray that actually works great for tooling and for misting birds. So um, to get started, that's really all you need. Um, so I'm just going to spritz my leather here. And depending on the type of leather, all leather is a little bit different. Sometimes you'll get really spongy, thick leather that will want to soak up water like a sponge. Um, sometimes you'll get leather that's thinner and just seems like it constantly looks like it needs to be rewetted. Uh, all leather is a little bit different. Usually what I'll do is I'll take a piece of leather, like a scrap piece, um, from the side that I'm working with, and I'll do it, I'll do some simple tooling on it. Like in this case, I tried out some tooling. I tried out this new antiquing gel that I bought, which I'll go over what that is later, and this new black dye that I bought. On top of doing some little basket weave practice patterns, trying to do a rope pattern that came out kind of crazy, um, and then some other simple border designs that I wanted to see. Um, so, I recommend starting with that so you can kind of see what the leather is like. Um, and I always recommend having a test piece around. You can try stuff out to make sure that you can pull it off consistently before, especially before you start trying to tool like a $150 piece of leather. Um, so for starters, like I said, you want to start out with spritzing your leather down. You don't want it to be so dry. Um, but you also don't want it to be so wet that when you tool, sometimes it'll be like like a sponge, like trying to tool a sponge if it's too wet. So you'll, you know, tool your design and you'll see it's not really sticking very well. Um, so I'm mostly just working in this little corner here, and I think this is good. You really just want a certain kind of moisture content going on. Um, I usually start in a corner because that's where I want my stuff to end up for the most part. You can kind of start anywhere you want really. You just want to apply even pressure to the stamp. For this one I give it a lot of good wax because it tends to come out light for some reason. And there's my pattern. And this kind of tells me that I have a good moisture content. I like to see this darkness around the patterning. Um, I think it looks nice, it highlights your design better. Um, oftentimes if the leather is too wet, you won't really get that dark kind of burnished look. It'll all just be super light colored and you won't be able to see it very well. So again, I just kind of am going to apply even pressure. Sometimes I'll kind of rock the stamp a little bit and that looks really good too. Um, so as you work, You know, you'll want to just make sure that your pattern is coming out, you know, the way that you want it to, spacing wise. So next I typically do some of these little dots. And try and get them as straight as possible. I like to start them right where the leaves are pointing. So you kind of have to pay attention to, you know, make sure that everything is straight. You're not drifting with your patterns, unless you want them to be that way. And there you go. And then I usually take a little cedar and you can put some little tiny kind of flowers in there. I just kind of like the way it looks. It's very basic. There's all sorts of different stamps that you can buy. Um, 
the options are endless. Um, eventually you might notice that your leather is getting a little bit dry. I kind of spritz as I work, honestly, to just kind of keep it where I like it in terms of moisture content. As you can see, I'm already making decent progress. That was a little crooked. But yeah, so you can pretty much continue going on like this for quite a while. Um, but I'll go ahead and I'll finish my border up and then I'll show you the next steps. All right, so we've finally completed stamping uh, the border pattern on my cuirass that I'm making for um, my set of LARP armor. Um, so if you would like to see me do more work on this armor piece, uh, in the next episode we'll be um, completing our border and doing some scaled side panels uh, using a stamping tool. Um, so thank you for watching, and if you would like to see more, then stay tuned.